for us to do. I want you to get comfortable. Go ahead and get comfortable in your seat. Get comfortable. I also want you to help me welcome to the stage for today our evaluation contest chair. A contest cannot take place without someone volunteering to make certain that the contest will run well. And today, we have a young lady who has come into District 30, who has come in and she's blazing a path <laughs> within her leadership. And many of you know her as a pageantry winner. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Everyone, help me welcome to the stage our Evaluation Contest Chair for 2012, Miss Distinguished Toastmaster, Charlene Reinhardt. Yeah. Evaluation Contest! You are in for a great treat today. This is the largest evaluation contest. We will be having eight contestants competing for the District 30 champion. Our Toastmaster for today was a District 30 champion last year. Not only for humorous speech, but for international speech. Not I'm sorry, not humor speech, evaluation speech contest, international speech contest, and table topics. Breaking the record of winning three contests in one Toastmasters Woo! fiscal year. Woo! Here to present the 2012 Jedi Champion of Contest, Distinguished Toastmaster, Barry Mixon. Governor of 
about marketing. Now may I have the division governors please rise and be recognized. And last but not least, our hardworking area governors. Today we will have two contests, the humorous speech contest and the speech evaluation contest. The first contest will be the speech evaluation contest. When that contest is concluded, we will have a break. We will not have a break. It will happen later on in the evening. <laughs> Remember those times when you supposed to be a Toastmaster because you don't know what's going to happen? This is for that moment. <laughs> All right. Contestants, timers, ballot counters, and sergeant at arms have all been briefed prior to the beginning of the contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern this contest. No one should enter or leave the room during the contestants' presentations. If you do so, if time permits, during the minute of silence, you may do so if time permits during the minute of silence between presentations. Does everyone understand? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. And May the contest begin. Okay, get out your ballot sheets. We're going to go over the contest order, contestant order. Ready? Okay. Our first contestant will be Jeffrey Smith. Jeffrey, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y, Smith, S-C-H-M-I-T-T. -T. Our second contestant, Rhea Young. Rhea is R-I-A. Young is T-I-J-O-N-G. Jim Petransky. Jim, J-I-M, Petransky is F-U-T-R-A-N-T-S-K-Y. Fourth is Prez Vesiv, Vesiv, Prez, P-R-E-S, Vesiv is V-A-S-I-L-E-V. Our fifth contestant will be Patrick Stevenson. Patrick, P-A-T-R-I-C-K, Stevenson, S-T-E-V-E-N-S-O-N. Sixth would be Linda Innigenberg. Linda, L-I-N-D-A, Innigenberg, which I just like saying because I finally learned how to say her name. E-E-N-I-G-E-N-B-U. R.G. Seventh, Sandra Washington. Sandra is S-A-U-N-D-R-A, Washington. W-A-S-H-I-N-G-T-O-N. And last but not least, Matthew Fox. Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Fox, F-O-X. In order for our evaluation contestants to compete, we need someone to speak for them. So please help me welcome to the lectern Patrick Barrett Benson. And his speech, the title of his speech is, Being Laid Off Was the Best Thing for My Career. Patrick Benson, Being Laid Off Was the Best Thing for My Career. Patrick Benson.
Thank you, Barry. Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning. Our welcome guests, and most important of all, our speech evaluation contest contestants. It is an honor and a privilege to be your target speaker. I will do my best to have many, many flaws for you to point out to an entire ballroom full of strangers. Yes, I volunteered for this. But being a target speaker is a great opportunity because it's a win-win situation. You see, if I give a great speech, you, the audience, may be entertained, possibly motivated. You might learn something. I succeeded. If I give a horrible speech, the evaluators are able to go over many, many different details, and again, I succeeded. <laughs> but not all situations are win-win. Unfortunately, earlier this year, I was in a no-win situation. I could not get ahead. I could not beat the system. You see, I was laid off. But that's not the situation I'm talking about. The situation that was a no-win for me was that I was in a job for 13 years that was going nowhere. I had started in my 20s with an organization that was very young, up and coming, a startup. I was employee number 54. Next week, we had gotten employee number 55. We were growing. But, it was a wonderful place to be. If you work 12-hour days, 14-hour days, all, an all-nighter, it never bothered you. Because we had ambition, we had goals, we had opportunities. I loved it. I fell in love with my job. Almost as much as I fell in love with my to-be future wife at the time. It turned sour but it turned sour slowly. It became tedious. It became a chore. Yet, for some reason, I felt that it was my duty, my obligation, a matter of honor to stick with this job, no matter what. This company was going to become the best in the world. We were going to be the next Google, the next Microsoft, the next whatever. It was going to be number one. And yet, I could not win. Although you need dedicated employees, although you need people with talent and ambition, you as an individual cannot fix a company. You may be able to inspire change, you may be able to lead others, but if the rest of the organization doesn't follow, you just become a cog in a machine. And that's what happened. Slowly over time, this ambitious, young startup organization became more and more political. It became a bureaucracy. Now, as an individual, I did well. I steadily rose through the ranks. Towards the end of my career, I had many, many perks. I could work from home whenever I wanted to. I had a very nice income. I had a corner office in downtown Chicago. You would say that by all means I was successful, but I was miserable because I did not have the challenge. I did not have the goal. I was not given a goal. You need leadership from above to tell you what challenges to tackle, what problems to solve. And unfortunately, it was just an endless cycle of projects. We're starting a new project, it's going to change everything. Oh, this is great. Oh, wait, this project's stuff. Well, maybe we shouldn't do that one. No, 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 no. We did the wrong project. We have a new project, it's going to be great. We're going to do everything. <laughs> I see some of you are in the workforce. <laughs> And like I said, the job became tedious. It became a chore. It was slowly destroying me. I didn't realize it at the time because I was so immersed in trying to improve, in trying to win, in trying to make the situation better. And then it happened. As I said, I had the privilege of working from home whenever I wanted to, which I respected. I had actually set up a quite nice home office away from my kids and wife who was secluded, everything I needed to be just as productive as if I was in the office, 
often I was more productive at home because I was able to focus on projects that would eventually be canceled. <laughs> and then I got the phone call. We're sorry, but with the economy the way it is, we're letting people go. You are one of them. This is not about performance. It's just a restructure. Of course, I was shocked. And then, to add insult to injury, they cut my phone. <laughs> so now, with no dial drum, I had a moment of clarity. It was as if, a, as if a lightning bolt had struck me and I was split into two people. The emotional side and the logical side. The emotional side was angry. How dare they do this? I was a good employee. A good organization would have made sure to have done this properly. They would have made sure I was in the office. They would have told me to my face. And the logical side stepped up and said, that's all true. But if it was a well-run organization, there wouldn't be layoffs. <laughs> Logic for the win. But what I didn't realize was that it was a complete and total blessing. You see, the moment I was laid off, I had time to think about what do I want to do? What do I like? What makes me a good person? It's really about what you like, what, what you enjoy. And suddenly I found myself thinking, I don't like being a techie in the back room. I like to be in front of people, sharing ideas. I don't like being the person who's going down the charts. I like to be the person who's asking others for their input. I realized that I was not, as I had been, a senior systems engineer. I was sort of a salesperson. And that's what I am today. I am a solutions architect. I design solutions. I work with the sales team. So i am got the best of both worlds. I get to stay technical, and I have no quarterly number to be. <laughs> but when I found that passion, when I found what I really wanted to do, suddenly I found another job. And surprisingly, my career took off. I now make more money. More importantly, I learn more. And best of all, I have more fun. That layoff was the best thing for my career. It kicked me out of the nest that I had grown too accustomed to and forced me to find what I really enjoy in life. If you ever go through such a situation, you have my pity. It is a tough time, but look at it as what it is. Liberation, a moment to refocus, a moment to discover who you really are. Thank you. Evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their, complete their evaluations. The Sergeant of Arms, who is the Sergeant of Arms? Okay. Madam Sergeant of Arms, will time to please give me five minutes. Madam Sergeant of Arms, will you please escort the contestants out the room? Time five minutes for them to begin when they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over, Escort our first contestant back in the room. We'll also have our timer in the room to begin timing five minutes.
is Jeffrey Smith. Ready. See, they give me the tough jobs, okay? The whole Jedi thing. This is when it really means something. Ready. Okay. Our first contestant is Jeffrey Smith. Smith. Jeffrey Smith.
Thank you, Madam Chairman. Our second contestant is Rhea Young. Our second evaluation contestant is Rhea Young.
Thank you, Madam Chairman. Evaluation contestant number three, Jim Bertransky. Evaluation contestant number three, Jim Bertransky.
Thank you, Madam Chair. Evaluation contestant number four, Trez Vasilla. Evaluation contestant number four, Trez Vasilla. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished guests, and especially Patrick. What a way to open up a speech by acknowledging the audience, by referring to the contestants and saying, you know what, guys? I'll make some mistakes for you. <laughs> That's a way to connect. Humor connects. Now we are ready to listen to your message. And what a message it was. A personal story, something you've experienced that has changed your life. And that's the power of the story. It gives you credibility. You've been there, you've done that. But it also gives you conviction and passion. Didn't he speak from his heart today? Yes. And that's a way to connect. I was particularly excited how you connected the story through the power of transformation. You got to your lesson through a personal transformation. But did you notice that there were two types of transformations? There was the company that was small and then grew into a political enemy, and then there was a personal connection of how you discovered that that's not the place for you. That was great. That was engaging. How can we make it a better, more powerful speech? Patrick, I noticed that you like to keep your hands up and would suggest at times to relax them to the side. Because I learned from Craig Valentine that if everything sticks out, nothing sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> Relax them to the side. Show that you are open to the audience. They, it, it will create an emphasis for your gestures when you use it. Another suggestion is connect with the audience with your questions, such as, have you ever felt yourself, found yourself stuck in a place that you don't belong? Or, if you get that call tomorrow, what are you going to do? Now they think on their circumstances. And finally, Patrick, a more powerful call to action at the end, something along these lines. If you ever find yourself in a cycle of mediocrity, find your passion. End with that key call to action so that you can motivate the audience to follow your advice. But overall, Patrick, humor from the start, a personal story delivered with your heart, transformation. When you focus on new focus questions, when you keep the hands to the side from time to time, and when you end with a powerful call to action, you will go further as a speaker. Thank you for your speech. It gave me such a great hope that if tomorrow my boss calls me and says, you know what, Chris? We don't need you anymore. <laughs> I can say, thank you. Just a side note, there will be no picture taking during the contest, with flash or without, no picture taking during the contest. Evaluation contestant number five, Patrick C. 
Stevenson. Evaluation contestant number five, Patrick Stevenson. Good morning and great speech. What a classic story. Triumph, utter tragedy, and one very timely with everything going on these days. The economy, unemployment, you related to a lot of people. Either we know someone or we've gone through it ourselves. It's a very touching story. I'm going to tell you a few things I liked and a few things that I hope you think about the next time you give that story. And I hope you do tell that story again. Number one, the story had a great progression, very natural. From the startup, the exuberance, then came the bureaucracy, then the disillusionment, and then finally, separation. A lot of the stories don't have that flow. Yours just flowed very, very well. And I think very wisely, you kept the name of the company out of the picture. Right on it. <laughs> Easy way to come off as bitter. No, I'm not disgruntled, but this is who let me go. <laughs> Two other things. You have a great, great voice. Very polished delivery. You express some concern up front about having a lot of flaws. No worries there. When well, I get to the things you do better, I had an entire time in the room picking them up. Also, humor. Number one, you did it up front. You got us laughing. Number two, you made fun of yourself. That's always the best target. Again, no risk there. So some of the things I hope you think about for next time. Your movement was a little bit measured. Back and forth. Not a lot outside of the main space here. And you had a tendency to just keep your hands down here. You'll go here, here, and when you clasp your hands, you'd often look down at the same time. You'd walk a little bit, clasp your hands, look down. So you kind of lost a connection there. You also tended to look towards the back of the room a lot more than the front. And the front of the room is where you can make the really good eye contact. You know, establish a connection with the people that are close to you. The rest of the room will get the same connection. But you can really focus yourself also, your gestures and body language was generally symmetric. If the left hand did this, so did the right hand. The left hand did this, so did the right hand. In and out together. Try practicing with one hand behind your back. It forces you. One of the few times you deviated was your story about the project life cycle. It's fun, we're doing a project, everyone's excited, we're going to change the world. Well, we can't do that, we can't do that. No, you know what, this is going to be tough and let's do something different. That was effective. Do a lot more of that. Totally asymmetric. And finally, what I wish your story had a little more of was dialogue. Tell us about the phone call. Reenact it when you got the call. And as you realize you're about to be let go. Hey, how's it going? You having a great day? Yeah, well, you know, things are going too good down here at the office. And I want to talk about a few things as you suddenly realize this. Or tell us how you brought the news to your wife, you know? Gee, honey, of my life, uh, I know you've been complaining about how much I work and we can never go anywhere. Guess what? <laughs> I'm going to close with your closing. You had a great epiphany. It changed your life and you told us that. A lot of stories are fun, but where's the epiphany? You had it and you repeated the epiphany and you even repeated the title of the speech at the end. Excellent job. Well done. Evaluation contestant number six, 
Linda Ennigenberg. Evaluation contestant number six, Linda Ennigenberg.
This is historic right now because usually we have six provisions, now we have eight. So, let me introduce and request evaluation contestant number seven, Sandra Washington. Evaluation contestant number seven, Sandra Washington. Evaluation contestant number eight, Matthew Fox. 
Valuation contestant number eight, Matthew Fox. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow champions of communication and guardians of grammar, <laughs> and of course, the Inspiration Master, Patrick, what an authentic journey you took us on today. And I believe that's the crux of this evaluation. It's authenticity. Now, as Toastmasters, we're striving to have authentic connections every time we're on stage. For example, you displayed several of these today, and I saw it when you came up. I knew we were dealing with a special speech. You immediately connected. Authentic connection number one, humor. That gets us on your side, and us receptive to hearing more information. You continued down that path with wonderful alliteration. A cog in a machine, a win-win to a no-win situation. Both of these our authentic connection number two. And it was brilliant how that vulnerability started to come through and continued us on that journey. Much like your journey, as you mentioned, going from being a rising star in the company to that time when it, it wasn't that same feeling anymore. It was empty. It was just you were clocking in and clocking out, and it wasn't there. Now. As you continue and you grow into being the authentic speaker that I believe, there's a few opportunities. One of them is rather small. Take it with a grain of salt. When you're thinking, you look down and you have a triangle symbol. Now, I wasn't sure if this was like a secret mason call to the crowd, <laughs> or if this was just that nervous energy coming out and thinking, but there's other ways that we can connect with the audience that are a little more natural and allow us to think. For example, I can turn to someone in the audience, pause for a moment, have them look away like this audience member just did to throw me off a bit. <laughs> but the point being that it allows you to think on your feet and create that connection. Now the real heart, the thing which I believe will continue you on your path of authenticity and to really bring you up here because you, you've got it, you have it all going on, it's that vulnerable. It's that moment I felt about six and a half minutes into your speech. When you were talking to me and the rest of us about losing your job. And it came off in a monotone manner. I lost my job. Well, okay, you lost your job. I wished I would have seen you. Ladies and gentlemen, I picked up the phone and I got that call. I lost my job. This is the first time in my life I lost it. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know where I was at that time. And I didn't know where I was going. I loved my job. And looking at monologues, looking at Dr. Seuss, looking at how actors bring emotion to the table will help reinforce that. So again, you brought us there at 640, and I think that's your biggest opportunity and your biggest strength. You're on my way, or you're on your way, my friend. <laughs> and I'm looking for you at a future contest. Remain silent while the judges complete their, complete their ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters.
judges are collecting the ballots and I have all the contestants come on stage in your order. Still remaining silent while the ballot counters are collecting the ballot. It's a silence. The Marine is being still here. Silver and Flater Bryant. All right. Hi, boys. Hi. 
my name is Press and I'm representing Windy City Professional Speakers. But you know what, when you go over five clubs, it's hard to keep track of the numbers. So I just want to mention real quick Lakeview, Toastmasters, Toastmasters at Lincoln Park, Michigan Avenue Toastmasters, Unity Toastmasters, Extreme Toastmasters, and Windy City Professional Speakers. Communicate the bronze. Friends has a whole bank account just for his close yeah, Obviously. <laughs> and Patrick. I'm Patrick Stevenson, and I am with uh, South Loop Speak Freaks downtown. My other club is so far away, it's in a different district. I actually go to Advanced Expresses, which is in the DeKalb area in District 54. Uh, Downtown, my club is 7079, and I don't know the, it's one of those seven or eight digit numbers that they keep adding to, and the other club is relatively new. Uh, education level, I think you wanted to know my like, college degree or where I went to school. Um, AC Bronze and AL Bronze. Thank you. Linda Eddenberg, I'm representing Fox Valley 6840. I also want to give a shout out to my advanced club, Top Toastmasters, my corporate club, and you Toastmasters who are here, and my Crystal Lake Toastmasters friends and family who are taking up all, almost a whole table back there. And I am in the gym. Yes, I'm Sandra Washington. I am representing Pathfinders Club 2734, which will, be, which will be celebrating 55 years in existence next year. Education wise, educational level, I have completed the CC. I've just done maybe one speech, only one so far toward AC Brands, but I'm here. You know my name, and for those of you that don't, I obviously have not gotten to your club to practice enough. <laughs> Aerostream Toastmasters, it's my biggest honor to be representing them tonight. I've also been humbled to have a time, or to go on for a little while, at Niles Toastmasters. And although I'm not a member, I feel like I'm a member at large of Westminster Toastmasters. The new club, you gotta check them out. Let's give our contestants a big round of applause. Chair Charlene Reinhardt, as well as our contest Toastmaster, Mr. Barry Mixon, another round of applause. <laughs> timeliness is part of a performance, and what we're striving for right now is timeliness. That means I am not going to make all of the announcements I was previously thinking of making, yet what I do want to let you know is where you're going next. Your green program will let you know there are two things happening next at 10.30. You will either be in the education session with one of my dear friends, Stan Piskorski, where he will teach you all about getting the most out of your Toastmaster experience, and that will be in the Oprah room. Or you will be right here in this room because you are a voting officer of your club, and that means you'll be a part of the district council meeting at 10.30. So two places. Oakbrook Room or Ballroom, those are our next two locations. One final point I want to mention to you is stop by the hospitality table because you can pick up lots of information, 
Many of our contestants did a great job today giving Patrick some recommendations and some reviews on what he can improve upon. There are a couple of programs that can help you do that. And one of them that I told Patrick that he hit right on the head, that hit that nail on the head for me, is a program that I'm doing in January. I want you to pick up that orange brochure. Make certain that you also pick up a club ambassador program, flyer, and both of those you can find on the hospitality table. Everyone, have a good time taking a break, yet we will see you at 10.30 in our two respective